So, I'm a little behind on What If. I just watched the first episode this week, and I thought it was an interesting start to the series, with a great central character in Captain Carter. I do wish it had diverged a bit more from the original film, but that's another story. No, the part which interested me the most was the Red Skulls plot, and how it seems to echo a years old storyline from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. with a lot of intriguing implications. So spoilers for What If Episode 1, and for the first four seasons of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., and let me explain what I'm talking about. Oh, and side note, don't worry if you haven't watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and don't want to, I'll summarise the relevant background in a minute. One of the consequences of the timeline's divergence in the Captain Carter episode is the SSR getting control of the Tesseract. As a result, Red Skull is unable to use the cube to create weapons and technology for Hydra, as he does in the Sacred Timeline, and so he's forced to look elsewhere for Hydra firepower, and ends up looking to the stars. It seems that owing to this defeat, Red Skull doubles down on the mysticism at the heart of his ideology, delving into the ancient Asgard-linked carvings he recovers and considering himself a god. Demands. Demands, does he. But a god does not answer to a man. It appears that Red Skull's plan is now to summon the champion of Hydra from beyond the stars. Soon, the true champion of Hydra shall be summoned from beyond the stars. And he does, of course, proceed to summon a giant tentacled beast. He doesn't really elaborate any further on the nature of this beast, but maybe he doesn't have to. You see, a very similar plot has been used before in Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'll summarise it here, and I'll try to keep it brief, but feel free to skip to the next chapter if you've seen the show. Essentially, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. revealed that Hydra's origins far antedate the Second World War. This is true in the comics too, but for different reasons I won't get into. Partially because they're just nuts. Michelangelo was an immortal demigod agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. kinda nuts. But in the MCU, Hydra was an ancient cult devoted to worshipping an extraterrestrial tentacled being called Hive. And their central task across the millennia was to bring Hive back to Earth. When this was finally accomplished in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 3, he was summoned in the chambers of an old European Hydra-owned castle. Now do you see where I'm coming from? The elephant in the room, or I guess the tentacle monster in the room, is that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is of dubious canonicity. Both evidence in and outside the show in the last few years has cast doubt on the it's all connected mantra with which it launched. I'm thinking of the way no one seems to acknowledge the snap in season 6 and 7 of the show, and various comments that have been made suggesting that the Disney Plus shows will be the first to link properly to the movies. But for all that, it's not clear either way. Most of these comments have been from people without any real authority on the matter. Note that Kevin Feige has always been extremely vague on the subject. The most recent example was when every possible comic book news site started reporting that Feige had decanonized AOS, but what he'd really said was that the Disney Plus TV would be the first Marvel TV to quote, interlink with the movies. Pay attention to that word interlink. It implies a reciprocal intertwining, not merely a shared continuity. And that never happened with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or any Marvel TV. Their relationship was always a one-sided one. So this isn't news, it's just Feige doing promo for Disney+. Plus. And if the six original Avengers can all survive the snap, then why can't the S.H.I.E.L.D. crew? There is also some evidence that at least the earlier seasons of the show are canon to the MCU. There's a bunch of crossover from characters like Sif, Fury, and Hill. Granted, as suggested above, it is one-sided, but Fury does seem to reference the Theta Protocol from the show in Avengers Age of Ultron. Pulled her out of mothballs with a couple of old friends. She's dusty, but she'll do. It's where he got the surprise helicarrier from. Add to that rumours of Marvel TV characters coming back, like Daredevil and Kingpin in Spider-Man and Echo, and even some Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters rumoured to be in Secret Invasion, and the question of continuity is open enough that we have to consider Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. when thinking of this what-if plotline. Personally, I think it's most likely that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. starts off fully canon, then diverges at some point, maybe when Terrigen enters the ecosystem, or maybe at the end of Season 4, where the crew was abducted from their timeline for the first time. Okay, so, S.H.I.E.L.D. might be canon, and there was a similar Hydra space tentacle beast plot. Great, who cares? Well, Jesus, there's no need to be so confrontational. If you shut up for a minute, I'll explain what all of this means. God. Essentially, there's three possibilities here. 
The most obvious one is that the beast in What If is a variant of Hive, the creature from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. We know from Loki that variants come in all shapes and sizes. If one deviation can make Loki a crocodile, what's to stop an alteration of Hive from becoming larger and more primal? Well, while this might be an exciting possibility, it doesn't quite work. We're told at the start of What If that the event which takes the episode off the sacred timeline is unequivocally Peggy's choice to stay in the room during Steve's operation. This gives only a few months, a year or two at most, of alternate events to unfold before we see the beast. And more importantly, there's no way that a change to events on Earth could even reach Hive before his summoning, let alone alter his physical form. So possibility one is shot, it can't really be a Hive variant, but that doesn't change the fact that the plot echoes Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to a remarkable degree. To definitively reveal that the Sacred Timeline Hydra Doctrine involves a sacrosanct quest to summon a tentacle god to Earth from, quote, beyond the stars, when this exact situation was in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. cannot be a coincidence, it is far, far too specific. At least it's an easter egg, and at most, Red Skull was trying to summon Hive. But clearly this isn't Hive, it can't even be a Hive variant, so what's the next possibility? Well, it is exactly that. Red Skull tried to summon Hive, but he failed. He got it wrong. Following the established Hydra cult backstory from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that the episode seems to reinforce, when it became clear that using the Tesseract slowly to usurp the Nazis, as was the plan in the Sacred Timeline, was no longer an option, Red Skull went back to this Hydra doctrine, got the Tesseract back and used it in an attempt to summon Hive. And he opened a portal, but he ended up summoning the wrong tentacle monster. I mean, Red Skull wouldn't know. He'd just see a big interstellar tentacle beast and assume, oh yeah, this is the secret tentacle god they told me all about. You might think that this is a pretty big contrivance, that the chances that in opening a random portal in an attempt to summon one tentacle god, a passable facsimile would just happen to be there are infinitesimally slim. But you might be surprised, as there's two pretty good candidates for just this role. The first is Shumagorath. I won't go into detail because we'll be here all day, but in the comics, Shumagorath is basically a primordial, unfathomably ancient, extra-dimensional sorcerer who also happens to be a giant squid dude. Word on the street is Shumagorath is maybe rumoured to be the villain of the next Doctor Strange film, and this might be Marvel letting us have a glimpse of him before that. The main point in favour of this theory is that at one point in the episode, Peggy refers to Red Skull's summoning plan as interdimensional. However, I'm not sure how reliable this is. I'm not sure how the space stone inside the Tesseract would allow travel outside its own dimension, and as we see in Loki, Infinity Stones don't really tend to work outside their own reality. Plus, Shumagorath tends to be a more intelligent creature than the rampant mass of flailing tentacles which we see here. Also, he doesn't really have much in the way of canonical links to Hydra or the Red Skull's ideology. But there is another candidate, and in my opinion, a better one. The name of Red Skull's base is conspicuously given in the episode, Castle de Craig. Red Skull's investigations into the occult have often centred on Asgard, introducing the Tesseract as the jewel of Odin's treasure room, and even bringing the Norse carving with him to the castle. So maybe it's just a kraken? From Asgard, or from another of the realms under Asgard's control. Krakens originated in Norse mythology, same as the rest of Asgard, and so it stands to reason that if Thor exists, Krakens could exist too. What's more, the German word for Kraken is Kraik, as in Castle de Kraik, the name of the Red Skull's base. Maybe it's just Hydra branding, or maybe whichever medieval Germans built this castle knew that there was some sort of connection between the area and the Krakens of mythology, a connection that Red Skull inadvertently triggered in his attempt to summon Hive. So, it can't be a variant of Hive, but it could be some other tentacle god Red Skull summoned by mistake. Either Shumagorath, or more likely, just some random Asgardian Kraken, who was probably just going about his day, eating a ship or something, until suddenly half his limbs are pulled through some random portal. Either way, Red Skull was wrong. But I did say there were three possibilities. So what's the third? Well, the third possibility is that none of this is right. Maybe Hydra Law actually had another tentacle god we never heard about, and this is who we see. Unlikely, but possible. 
Maybe the law similarities are just maddeningly coincidental, and this is new law that just happens to be near identical to what Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. told us five years ago. Or maybe it's just entirely unrelated to anything I've mentioned for the last 10 minutes. But I think this possibility is by far the most boring one, and until we know more, I'm gonna choose to believe that Red Skull accidentally summoned a Kraken while trying to summon Hive. Hey, it's in character. Red Skull's a Nazi, and Nazis are morons, so if the shoe fits. But let me know what you think. Is it Hive? Is it Shumagorath? Is it a Kraken? Or none of the above? And what did you think of the episode? Chuck it all down below. I'd love to know. See you next time.